Hi lads. Going to um, back up some gears. We got dogs that are slipping in the box. So what you find happens is the leading edge on your dogs rounds off and that slides out of these holes. So what happens is that. So you draw and just the centrifugal, just the force that's going through this gear is pushing that gear out. So what we need to do is back cut them. So we need to run, we need to put put that on a small angle and run run something through here that cuts out the very base of the dog but leaves the top alone so that you end up with an angle. Um, how are you going to do that? A lot of guys use a Dremel. It's not a precise measurement. Um, I want to do it precise so that each dog has exactly the same angle on it and each corresponding hull has, a, has the exact same angle so that when you put them together at any one given point in time all three faces engage at exactly the same time you don't have this one for argument's sake being in with a Dremel sits out here and then one of these other ones take on the full load so doing it a lot more precise is going to be the way we're going to do it so how do you do that um, I want to do it here at home I want to do it in the barefoot garage so there's no fancy tools we don't have engineering gear we don't have you know what you have in the shed so I've decided I'm going to use my drill press and I've gone down I've had to go down to the shop and buy a, a six millimeter die grinder bit um, and then we're going to set up set the, the base of the pedal stool drill you're going to kick it up on an angle and then that one angle we can do every single one of these dogs at the exact same point and then we swap the angle around on the other side and we can do these correspondings and that will give us our back cut gears it's cost us nothing it cost us twenty dollars for a die grind a bit so what angle do you use I'm going to go one and a half. Um, there are guys, I've heard of guys going a bit heavier, but they only back cut the dog. I want to back cut this as well. So if we go two and a half degrees for argument's sake, and we leave that square, we're going to end up loading up this front edge of the dog. So we'll split it. So we'll go to one and a half degrees. So a one and a half degree angle on here and a one and a half degree angle on there. So that will give us a big enough pull so that this one won't try and won't try and slide out because it's caught or whichever which way. So that's the plan. Um, how do you how do you make a one and a half degree angle. Um, you can't use, I've looked at the angle on my drill press and it's nowhere near accurate, nowhere near what I want accurate to be able to put it on one and a half degrees using the pedestal drill and then turn it around and put it on the other side of a hundred, it's going to be way out. So we have to make a one and a half degree wedge. How do, you, how do you work out what's a one and a half degree wedge? So, you ring an engineer and makes what you do. And so I rang Mr. Horn and he said, you want to make a wedge that's four millimetres here, so four millimetre off the bottom and 160 millimetres up here. And then from this point to that point, you draw a line and that will be one and a half degrees whether it turns out to be 1.56 or 1.8 or it doesn't really matter 
it's just a very fine angle that we can set up the drill every single time, swap it over, put it on the other side, and it will still be the same. But really, you can't have a four millimeter edge there um, and put that on your, because my pedestal base is a big hole in the middle of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll leave this whole base here. I'll come up, let's say, we'll come up 20 mil. So that leaves us a nice big base to work on that we can put that on our pedestal drill. And then we'll come the four mil, and then we'll go up the 160. And that will give us the 100, that will give us our one and a half or whatever it is, degrees, and a nice big flat base that we can put out on our pedestal drill. So we'll go through and do that. Um, I won't start with the tip of it. We'll come up the 100 mil. We'll come up the 100 mil mark and start with that. So that will give us a nice, even, um, a nice mark that we can start on. As long as I'm good with a pair of scissors, we'll be right. So 20 mil there. 20 mil here. Getting it as precise as we can. No, I don't. So, 20 mil, 20 mil. Draw a line. Sorry about this, should have done that. There it is. So, that will give us our nice base that we can put on our. On our pedestal drill, and we come across here four mil. We come up here one hundred and sixty mil. The hundred, so that'll be two hundred and sixty mils. Like so, and then we draw a line from here. There. And that is our angle, just up here. That's our angle we're going to be using. So, using our kindergarten art. Uh, making skills. We'll see how well we can cut a pair of, how straight we can cut cardboard with scissors. Without breaking anything, of course. This is a very fine angle. Right on. The last tiny little piece of a cut here. through that other piece and there you have one and a half degrees so we've got our base that we can put this on we won't need all that length so we'll be able to cut some of that off but now we can put set our set our base and we set our die grinder up on our one and a half degree angle So this is what we need to do. So we need to sit this in through here. So we need to need to wind this up a bit. It won't matter. We just need this. So we need that to be a little bit enough. Just cut that off at the top of the drill truck. So that will sit down against there. Turn that around to get our most the most height out of our out of the 
piece of paper we're using. And we can move it from there. One and a half degrees. It's about there. We'll be close enough. Do that up so we can't get out of it. And there's our one and a half degrees, and you can clearly see, clearly see that that's on an angle. So then we just grab our, we can roll this down. Grab our pieces of aluminium. We can set that up. Like so. And then we can get out and wind the table up. So it sits right. Going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. We're overcutting it. We need to go this way. Which way we need to go. So, don't blame me, I'm a truck driver. I'm not an engineer. So these things are going to happen. But you can clearly see there. That, so you can see the difference. Set that off. Bring you back the other way. So we got it. Within QE, within being spot on, for those that don't understand Australian language, like so. Let me do that up again. And then we should have a gear cutting the right way. Yeah, that's better. So then we can come into there. So we can cut through. We can follow our dog around, just backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, until it touches the top of the dog. And then, if worse, the only thing that will really happen is we'll have to measure the verniers, get the verniers on and measure the top of our new dog and the back of it to make sure they're exactly the same size and then we'll know that everything's as it should be. So, we'll give that a go and see what it looks like.
And as we can see, well, it's far enough yet, but that's taken it all the way to the top almost. So we've got a little bit to go. So we'll see how we go to the end of it. So we can see, you can't, I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but you can see the slightest little, the slightest, slightest, slightest little back cut. So then we grab our, grab the verniers, probably just easiest to go, easiest to go this way on the full end of the, full end of the dog so we get the, the exact reading on the top of them. Close it. You can actually see when you put the verniers down, you can see the tiniest little gap at the bottom. So that's what we're chasing. It's 10.9. That's it's got to come down a little bit. And that's that's 10.6 that one, right? 10.9. This one was 10.9. No, that's 11. So that's the 10.9. So this one, we've just got to take that one, take a couple of 0 0.0 millimeters off it to make it exactly the same size as those other two. And then we have a back cut gear that has exact same cuts on all three faces. If they're exactly the same size here, all three faces will meet at the exact same time in the in the in the female side of the gear, and that will be a precise setting. So we'll just go through and finish that, and then I'll do the do the female on the other gear, and we'll have a look at it. So they're the faces we need. So we'll mark them with a texter. That's the machine face we need. We need this face done. We need that face done. And we need this face done. So that we know which faces we're dealing with. And to get our angle right, because we, we've cut this way on the dog, and that's the way it goes. So to save disturbing our plate, we just need to turn our gear upside down, and the cut will be exactly the same to meet our dogs. So... Let's get away. Go through and set it up. I'll get a little piece of wood that we can lay that on to lift it up, so we're not chewing into the chewing into that, and we'll have a go. Texture didn't work, so we're gonna. I'll just use some white chalk, but we're gonna have to do all of them. But there you have it. I decided against the timber. We'll just put him straight on the plate. But that way we can lift the the, the base up. And we can actually use the top part of the 
the tip instead of just chewing out the bottom edge of the tip so we can use the hull tip over both the jobs on all the gears and then we're not wearing our tip out in one spot. So there we have six machine faces to um, match in with our dogs. And that's all we're chasing. So there you have it, is what we were chasing. So we've machined our leading edges down and then we've machined our matching our matching faces. So you can see how this is all polished from the dogs sliding and spinning. So now that's that's only one and a half. Um, that's what I wanted. I think if you if you're going to go too big on it, um, I know fifth gear. So when you're in top, it has it has one hell of a dovetail on it, but it's got to hold it in top gear, and you're not going to change up out of top gear. If you were to put a great big bevel on these two gears, this is second, first and second, you would have trouble, you, or you may have trouble, pulling it out of gear to go into neutral. Or to go into third gear so that's basically how it's I'll, I'll just finish the rest of the gearbox now and do this but i think that one and a half will be sufficient um, if nothing else it's got freshly machined faces so however many miles it was that the last owner if you haven't been the owner of the bike for good you know and depending how you ride the bike these machined faces should outlast you the rider so, but yeah, like we say with the barefoot garage, it's simple, no expensive tools. Sometimes there's a little bit of time involved. So from the start of this video to this finished product now is just on 25 minutes. So, you know, it's cost you whatever a carbide tip for a dog grinder costs at your local auto, at your local industrial supplier, drop it in your drill stand. Um, it won't work in a hand drill because you have to have the die grinder bit held solid so you can't because you, you'll end up bouncing all over the place with a drill but if you've got a mate that's got a drill press set it up like that you'll have no trouble and it'll be done in half an hour so just having finished the product and watching back and looking at the gears, how they cut, I think I'll move how we came four millimeters at the bottom. I think we'll move to six. And it's just that, if we can see, it's just that slightly a little bit bigger of an angle. Because um, you can't really see the, um, the effect of it. So I think at least you'll be able to visually see a decent a decent back cut. And then, you know, like I said, with the one and a half, it'll out the machine's faces will outlast. But if you want to put a we'll go to the six millimeter and it will just put a, a, a visual back cut on it that you can see and you know it's gonna dig in and hold.